Hey guys, even here and in today's video we got some really interesting bodybuilding updates. We are starting with a physique update of Goodwito at two, a little bit more than two weeks out of his first shot this season, Detroit Pro. Now we can see his conditioning right here. Is it good? Well, like he says here in the caption, there is very little time left to enter the final stage of preparation. So he is two and a half weeks out of Detroit Pro, which means how much time he actually has to push for conditioning. Another week or a week and a half, tops, and then his peak week starts. As he also says in the caption, he is improving every day, which is something he needs to do if he wants to be really ready for the show. He needs to push hard now and literally make changes every single day because, again, there isn't a lot of time left. And at this point, I don't think he's... 100% I don't think he is fully dialed in I think he needs to do a little bit more work but will he be ready can he make it in time yeah yeah sure I think he will be I think he can be decently conditioned for Detroit Pro in two and a half weeks now there is this Instagram post this comparison right here that caused a lot of traction a lot of debate and basically they're asking uh, is Vitaly in problems because his update from 10th February which was how long? A month and a half ago? And this one now apparently don't look that much different. At least that's what Admin is saying here, but personally, I don't agree with it. I think it might seem like that on the first glance, but if you pay more attention, you will notice first of all that a photo on the left was edited heavily. And the new photo, the photo on the right, is not edited at all, which is weird for good Vito. He usually does edit his photos quite a bit, but this new photo is actually pretty raw. The other thing is, he's flat right now. Again, two and a half weeks out. This is the part of the prep when you push the hardest, especially if you're running late a little bit. So right now, he's probably like on super low carbs. So when his glycogen is depleted, there is no muscle to push against the skin. So he had more of a pop back in February 10th, and now his skin looks a little bit loose, and therefore he looks a little bit softer than he would look if he carved up. So there is that. But if you pay close attention to like his inner thighs, you will definitely see more details, more vascularity. Even though he's flat, there is still some vascularity showing. Also like the upper chest area, shoulder area, arms too. He definitely did lose a lot of fat and once he carbs up and once he finishes the conditioning because he's not through there is a little bit more work left to be done before detroit pro and then i guess a little bit more before arnold brazil i think his final package is actually gonna look good it's gonna look great i mean good Vito, he kind of is known for not really bringing super hard conditioning that's not exactly his strongest point, at least it wasn't back when he was competing in the other federation, and I guess as an amateur when he won a pro card, he also wasn't exactly super, super peeled, but I don't think he needs to be that conditioned. With his shape, with his structure, with his crazy, freaky body parts, he can be decently conditioned, and you know, with his fullness and size, he will look pretty hard, but he's going against the top pros in the world, the best bodybuilders in the world, and all these guys have all those things, basically, but they're also shredded, so, I mean, most of them, the good ones, so if Goodwito wants to be competitive against the top guys, he needs to come in peeled, uh, is there enough time? I think so. Also, he's coached by Chris Asito, and Asito is known for conditioning, you know, he brings everybody peeled, dialed in, so, yeah, I have no worries about that. Also, on a recent Madness podcast, Dennis James said that he spoke to Chris Asito, and that he is very much pleased with Goodwito, especially with his backside, with his back double bicep, so we'll see what that's gonna look like, so far we didn't see any physique updates of his back, but from the front, yeah, I think he will make it, I think he's running a little bit late, it's not ideal, I would prefer if he was already pretty much ready, so he can cruise into the show, but it is what it is. Will he be ready? Yeah, absolutely. Will he win Detroit Pro? Yeah, I think he is the favorite. As far as Harlem Classic Brazil, not likely. Not likely against Rafael Brandao, but I think it's gonna be a close battle for the second spot between him and Tonio Burton. We'll find out soon enough, but right now, you guys tell me what you think about this most recent physique update of Goodwito. Do you think he looks good? Will he be ready? All right, the next physique update that we got is Hunter Labrada, who seems to be growing. I mean, who seems to be looking bigger than ever, potentially. I mean, I don't know which show he's doing. I think he's going to be doing the shows later in the year. But if he competed, for example, against Nick Walker, 
if he did the New York Pro, yeah, I think he would be a formidable opponent for Nick Walker. I don't know if there is anybody else who would really challenge Nick Walker, but this guy looks like he grew, like he looks bigger and better than I've seen him in a long time. And I also heard other people who saw him in person say that he looks cartoonish, that he looks like a monster. And it's hard to even get an idea of how big he is because of his enormous head, but really, he is at a level of size of Nick Walker. I think he's like close to 290. And I mean, basically, you can see it. You can see how massive he is basically everywhere. His conditioning for this weight is awesome. I mean, look at the glutes. They're showing separation. Hamstrings as well, lower back too. And look at his back. That was always his weakest point, but now it actually seems pretty big, like it seems improved as well. A lot of people signed Hunter Roth. After he placed the fourth in 2021 Mr. Olympia and then he was like out of top six for the next two years, a lot of people felt like he's pretty much done, that he's washed up, but I don't think so. I don't think so. After seeing this physique update, it seems like Hunter is bringing some... Look at the legs, man. Look at the freaking legs and the shoulders. I mean, it seems like he's bringing something new, something next level. I mean, look at the freaking fullness, and also the conditioning is pretty good for this size. He is freaking massive. He is massive. After that Mr. Olympia 2021, where he beat Nick Walker, I mean, it was a very controversial win. A lot of people felt like Nick was robbed. They only gave it to Hunter because of his name, because Labrador Nutrition was sponsoring that year's Mr. Olympia, and so on. Personally, I didn't have a problem with it. I could see an argument for Nick Walker winning as well. It was close in my mind. There wasn't a big discrepancy in size. I thought Nick was a bit sharper, but Hunter was more aesthetic. Basically, overall, I was okay with this result. I never felt uh, Nick was uh, robbed here, and I don't think that today. However, next year, 2022, Nick Walker improved significantly. He came in much bigger, and Hunter came in a little bit off. So by placing third at that year's Mr. Olympia, Nick Walker kind of put a distance between him and Hunter Labrada. And last year, Hunter placed sixth, and uh, Nick wasn't there. But honestly, I feel like the problem with Hunter Labrada is peaking well. He rarely ever peaks well. I think he peaked well that year, 2021 Mr. Olympia, and also last year at Tampa Pro, and that was basically it. He's usually very much off, and it's not just conditioning. I think he just misses the peak for some reason. Now, as you can see right here, he looks massive. He looks really freaking big, and if you consider the shape and the potential conditioning and peak, I think he's like the only guy right now that could challenge Nick Walker at the New York Pro. I don't think he's doing that show. I think he's doing shows later in the year. He's gonna take some more time off to try and progress even more. But like, aside from Derek, Samson and Hadi, who are not competing anymore, who else could really challenge Nick Walker? I mean, Andrew Jacked, yeah, sure, maybe, that's a possibility. Brandon Curry, I don't think so. Even though he placed ahead of both Andrew Jack and Hunter Labrada at the Mr. Olympia after being hospitalized for an entire day before the show, I still don't think that's gonna happen because I think Brandon needs to make improvements and he's at that point of his career where he doesn't really make improvements and Hunter, it seems at least like he is doing that. Andrew Jack potentially as well. But Hunter right now definitely looks, I would say, the biggest he ever looked. I think this year we're gonna witness a huge transformation from Hunter on that stage. What the hell did he do to get this new size, to progress this much? At this level of his career, we can only wonder. But did he make progress? He absolutely did. Look at him. He looks so bubbly, so round, so massive. So much muscle, man. This is crazy. This looks so freaky. We'll see. We'll see. But I can tell you right now, he is qualifying for the Mr. Olympia, and I don't think he's ever going to be beaten again by Brendan Curry. And unless Andrew Jack brings something improved and more conditioned, I don't think he's beating Hunter either. And the way this is going, depending on how much of this muscle stays and whether he brings good conditioning and good peak, I could even see Hunter beating Nick Walker again. Because, again, he's more aesthetic, his structure, symmetry, balance is much, much better, and it seems like now he has comparable size. So it's all gonna come down to conditioning, and not just conditioning in terms of uh, body fat percent, but like conditioning in terms of detail. Does Hunter even have that? 
when his body fat percent goes low enough, is there gonna be that kind of detail that, for example, Nick Walker has? I don't know about that. I mean, he would have to be next level. He would have to bring something new. But really, all he can do is get bigger, as he did, and now get shredded, and also peak well. If he does those three things well, guys, do not underestimate this guy. I mean, do not sign him off yet. Look at him right now. He looks freaking crazy. He looks really freaking impressive. I feel like this is gonna be a really good year for him. All right, the next thing I found particularly interesting, it's Samson Dauda posting a photo with Sam Sulek. Of course, they both have the same sponsor. They travel together a lot and they train together many times. But what Samson wrote here was really interesting. He says, the greatest gift you can give to someone else is your time. Because this is something you can never replace. To pass on your knowledge and experience and help someone else achieve their own goal fills you with a sense of accomplishment and pride. And this is the path of true happiness. This really looks like uh, Samson is saying that he's coaching Sam Sulek. Is that what's really happening? Once again, he says to pass on your knowledge and experience and help someone, someone else achieve their own goals fills you with sense of accomplishment and pride. Now, as far as I know, this was never made official. As far as I know, as far as the world knows, Samson is not coaching Sam Sulek. So what he's saying here, I guess, then is like that he's giving him advice here and there. But then, I don't know, the way he wrote this, to pass on your knowledge and experience and help someone else achieve their own goals fills you with a sense of accomplishment and pride. I mean, it really seems like he's coaching him officially. But I don't think that's the case. I think he's just, you know, giving him advice here and there. If I'm wrong, if he's coaching him officially, you guys correct me. But if he's talking only about giving him advices, he definitely overstated this whole thing. And also, I've seen some videos of Sam Sulek, and basically, it seems like he always does his own thing. He does get a lot of advice from his peers, but it seems like he always does what he thinks makes the most sense. He does a lot of things in an unconventional way, but it works for him, and I don't know, I don't think this guy is very much coachable at this point, or that he's taking a lot of advices from other people, but yeah, I could be wrong, maybe this means that uh, Samson officially hired Samson to prep him, at least that's what this caption really looks like. You guys tell me down below what do you think or what do you know, if you have any information about this whole situation. Also, give me your thoughts about Hunter Labrada and Good Vita as well. And if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, guys, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon. All the best and bye-bye.